Welcome back, everybody, to the Kansas City Royals franchise here on MLB The Show 21. It's a muggy day out there in Kauffman Stadium. We're taking on the White Sox in this game here. We'll also be taking on the Minnesota Twins at Target Field, a place that we have had our struggles and we've had our really good games. Just recently in the last episode, we had a ridiculously close matchup with those Twins. Let's get it started here in this matchup. We've got Danny Mendick pumping his fist here. Well, pump your fist to that, sir. Never mind. The umpire's going to do it for you. You're gone. Nice toss there by Salvador Perez. Next batter up is Yohan Mankata lifting a little pop up here to second baseman. Whit Merrifield making the play. we got a quick two outs here with nine pitches. That's going to lead Eloy Jimenez on a five-game hitting streak up to bat here. One out count. Little ground ball here to Ryan McBroom and a flip to James Paxton, who's covering, makes the play, and we're out of the first inning. Clean, clean first inning. Meanwhile, Clayton Kershaw, 7-6, 3-7-3. Seven seven so the wins and loss record is not where he wants it to be, but he's got a pretty decent ERA there for being in his upper 30s, right? A, a veteran presence in that White Sox pitching staff, so definitely a reason why this White Sox team is making some noise here in 2022. Now, last season, you could say in 2021, they're still a good team, right? And adding a guy like Clayton Kershaw is going to do some wonders for that pitching staff. And we can see why he's going to get a quick ground ball here to Javier Baez. And then Whit Merrifield, <clears throat> Goldie, what are you swinging at? I'm going to lift a little pop up here to Jose Abreu at first. Now, take a look at this play. Danny Mendick has just been kind of a screw up here today. Yes, he did get that base hit, but kind of a screw up right now. Salvador Perez comes up, and that's going to be the first out of the bottom of the second as he strikes out. Here's Ryan McBroom, line drive to center field. That's going to be caught out there by Luis Roberts. 22 pitches here for Clayton Kershaw, and the 23rd is a called strike looking. Called third on Hunter Dozier. Let's go to the top of the fourth as we're skipping ahead here pretty quickly. Just nothing doing for either offense. Both lefty starters here are pitching gems. And James Paxton gets an out here. Easy play. Eloy Jimenez is going to strike out. That's number one. That's strikeout number one for James Paxton. So it took him all the way to the fourth inning to get his first K. So pitching the contact, make his defense work. Clayton Kershaw on the other end in the bottom of the fourth gets a K himself. And with a full count, this is going to be a base knock here. But look at Ben Benintendi with the gun on Tim Anderson. The tag is applied. Wood Merrifield with a quick tag and Timmy Anderson. You're gone. Look at this throw all the way from left field. Quick tag, too. That's a nice outfield assist for Benny. All right. Good stuff. Good defense all the way around. Good pitching, too, guys. Top of the fifth still. Robert is going to ground out. And that is going to be out number two in the top of the fifth. Next batter up, we've got a strikeout. Again. Good stuff here by James Paxton. Bottom five, Salvi coming up with a big knock here into the gap. Left center field gap. He's going for two. Digging, churning. 17 speed all the way. Gets him a second relatively easily. And Ryan McBroom going to ground out here to Tim Anderson. That's unfortunate because that lefty-righty matchup, we like Ryan McBroom in that situation. We need a base knock right there. Next batter up is Hunter Dozier. He's going to lift a fly ball here to left. Got some good wood on it, but just off the plate a little bit. And he's just going to pop it up to left and get the out. So next batter up is Andrew Benintendi. Lefty on lefty, and he just missed. Just missed that pitch inside. Slider breaking in on him. And that's going to be out. It's going to be an out. The Royals are done for their half of the inning here. Let's go to the top of the sixth. That's going to be a nice play made by Mondesi. Let's go to the bottom of the sixth as we continue to pitch well against this White Sox team. Bubba Starling getting a start there in center field. He's going to get a base knock. So he's on first base here with nobody down. 0-2 count on Mondesi. Lifts a fly ball there to left. Jimenez makes the play. And we're already down with one out. So 60 pitches, 0-2 count. Javi Baez right over top of Tim Anderson's glove, who's a very good defender over there at short. But either way, base knock, we're going to take it. Now you got to avoid the double play here, Wit. 1-0 count. Merrifield, gap shot. That's going to get down and roll all the way to the wall. That should score two. We're going to send Javi. He's rounding third, heading for home. The throw doesn't even come in. It is 2-0 Kansas City with Merrifield with a big-time knock right there, putting our guys on top here. Jorge Soler, next pitch. 
Oh, oh, count. Get up. Get legs. Luis Robert can't make the play, but oh, it's off the wall. I thought it was a home run. So Soler is going to roll into second. Merrifield will score. And that's going to be 3-0. KC. And that's enough to get Clayton Kershaw knocked out of the game. That's a beautiful thing, man. Beautiful thing. Timely hitting, clutch hitting. Took us a while to get to the big lefty, but we got it done. It's 3 0. Here's Anderson. Little bobble, but enough to get Salvi Perez. He's got that 17 speed, just not enough, just not fast enough to dig, dig on the line. He gave it a hard 90, but just not hard enough, I guess. McBroom's going to fly out here. Little pop up to Mendick. Makes a play. Let's go to the top of the seventh inning here, and we've got Mondesi in the hole. Big time throw. He's going to get the runner, but no, they call them safe. Mike Matheny says, nope, let's go to the headset. We're going to challenge this thing. And it looks like Jeremy Bonderman is a... Uh, yeah, Jeremy Bonderman, old-time old Tigers, apparently a umpire now. <laughs> it's literally his face scan. What, what do you want me to say? But the, the call was safe at first. He is definitely out, and that's going to do it for Danny Mendick. So he's, he's done. Next batter up, Eloy Jimenez, is going to be called out here with no challenge from the White Sox. So very nice play in the hole. Could have easily challenged that. I thought he might have been safe. It was a really close call. Really surprised that Chicago didn't challenge it. Maybe they didn't want to with two outs. Maybe it's just a glitch in the game. Either way, it's a missed opportunity for Chicago. All right, let's get to Josh Stalmont against Yermin Mercedes, who's not retired. Joke. James Paxton is relieved by Josh Stalmont, and he comes into the game, gets the job done, and Whit Merrifield in the bottom of the eighth. We're looking for some insurance there, but he can't get on base with a little pop-up to Mercedes. All right, top of the ninth. Let's get it done. We've still got Josh Stalman is out there. He gets the first out. Javi Baez makes the play. Mondesi is getting out there into the outfield. Grass makes the play. That's two down. Next batter up is Moncada. Lefty on righty. Left in a fly ball all the way out to right field. Hunter Dozier makes the play, and that is a, another W for Kansas City. Yeah, baby. Man, we are killing it this season. I'm loving the way that this team is all formed up. And it's surprising that we didn't really make a whole lot of big moves for this team. Like, we literally just acquired Paxton, Cueto, and Javi Baez. So maybe that's enough. Maybe that's enough to put this team over the top. But right now, things are still clicking offensively. Late inning. Clutch. Good pitching. I think we're playoff material. We just got to win some more games, start getting on some more winning streaks, really separate ourselves from that AL Central, which is starting to get jam-packed. Guys saw up on your screen, Joey Gallo was a target that was often talked about in the comments section of these videos, saying that we needed to go out there and we needed to go get a guy like that, a guy with that power in our outfield, because we need it. We've got Jorge Soler, that, you know, power, power outfielder, but we need another one, is what you guys were talking about. But I just didn't pull the trade off in time, and the Mets got him. Not that I even wanted Joey Gallo. 201 batting average is not something I want to work with, but... All right, let's get into the gameplay. We have four straight balls. Make it five. Make it six, actually. Make it seven straight balls for Jorge Lopez. What the heck is going on here? So we take this pitch. Why not? Old baseball rules. He hasn't thrown a strike yet. Seven pitches. Might as well just wait on one. He does toss two straight strikes now, so you're thinking that Javi's got a swing here, but he does offer at a pitch in the dirt. Curveball on the outside part of the plate. Mondesi. Gets in with a stolen base. Now take a look here at Whit Merrifield. We're going to follow him throughout this game. He's got a 19-game hitting, 19 game hitting streak here, and he's going to strike out. Tough pitch to hit. Good movement there by Lopez, and he's going to get Merrifield to K. Next batter up, ground ball. Jorge Soler is going to lead off the scoring here for Kansas City. We're in 4th of July, guys. Did I mention that? This is a 4th of July game, so we're wearing our black uniforms. we got the Stars and Stripes hat on. Twins are wearing their red and blue. It's a pretty sweet matchup. Hopefully we can start some fireworks, right? So far, so good, though. We've got a base knock here, and Jorge Polanco gave it the old ole. Next batter up is Andrew Benatendi, and there's your pitch breakdown. So we're looking for the sinker. He's thrown way too many curves. We're looking for the sinker. We got it. Benatendi going to send this one up the middle. It's 2-0 here. Hunter Dozier comes up and promptly grounds out. Classic Hunter Dozier move right there, right? So Jorge Lopez escapes, and I say escapes because it could have been worse with how he started that 2-0. To get out of that 2-0, that's a blessing. 
for Twins fans. All right, so Jordan Montgomery, this is our first action and gameplay that we've seen Jordan Montgomery. I actually acquired him in a couple episodes ago. We just haven't been able to see him in gameplay. And right now he is not really having that great of a season. Even with the Yankees and now over here in Royal Blue, he has not been able to turn his season around. Still upwards of 5 ERA. He's getting some good defense from Javi Baez, but not here as he gives up a base knock. And then a two-run homer. So the 2-0 two, the two lead that we had is quickly erased. Seven pitches. It's like seven was an unlucky number here. So Lopez had seven straight balls. Montgomery had seven pitches here, and now it's 2-2. Two two. So you, you tell me. You tell me. Some, some goofy stuff's happening here. But he does get Donaldson to strike out, which is nice. Mondesi with two down, lays a drag, bunt down, putting the pressure, continuing to put the pressure on. Definitely put the pressure on a rattled pitcher. But he gets Baez to ground out, so that's a good good job by Lopez. Now take a look at this. Now, I, what Hunter Dozier... Come on, man. Get on your horse. I know you're faster than that. Holy crap. Miguel Sano, ground ball past first baseman. It was down the line. They were in a shift. They get it. But, dude, Hunter Doji, you got to get over there a little bit quicker than you did. So two down here for the runner on third, and we luck out. We luck out. Jordan Montgomery gets out of it. Still a 2-2 game here. Whit Merrifield still on that 19-game hitting streak. Can't get a hit here in the top of the third. He's going to fly out to Byron Buxton now. Hey, Jorge Soler, change up right down the middle. You talk about a pitcher that was rattled. How do you leave a change up right down the middle, man, in this early stage? 43 pitches. Is he starting to feel it a little bit? Is he starting to get his arm lagging a little bit? Is he tired? Either way, Jorge Soler sends this one deep and gone. It's 3-2 Kansas City. What a ground ball here. Nice play by Mondesi. Another strong throw from shortstop. Here's Luis Arias going to take this pitch. A breaking ball from Jordan Montgomery is going to miss, and that's going to lead to a walk. Now here's Randy Arozarena. Already had that two-run shot, and this one was a perfect, perfect. That's another two-run shot. Swinging early and swinging often is Randy Arozarena. So his first home run was on the first pitch that he saw. A changeup inside, right? He takes one pitch, 1-0 one -oh count, and then this one, the second pitch the at-bat, home run. So Jordan Montgomery, I, I don't know how you attack Randy or Rosarena right now. It's 4-3 to three Minnesota. Donaldson sends this one past Hunter Dozier again. So right field is just its just an adventure out there, man. Last season we had an adventure out there in right with Soler. Now we're having an adventure again with Hunter Dozier. It's just you can't catch a break here. But we do get a break here with that call. That should have been strike three, possibly, on Tyler Naquin in a full count. Lopez delivers this low and away. Fly ball. Line drive. Fly ball. To center field in Byron Buxton. All right. Let's go to the bottom of the fourth. 47 pitches in for Jordan Montgomery. That's going to be a leadoff single. And Montgomery has to get Mitch Garver. No. No. Oh, the home run ball. For Jordan Montgomery, he just he can't figure it out. He can't figure it out. It doesn't matter if I'm pitching with him. It doesn't matter if it's in Sim. He's having a tough, tough season, man. I hope he turns it around here in the second half. We're still in the first half. We're still in the beginning of July. Hopefully he turns this thing around and we can get him to be a reliable left-handed arm in that starting pitching rotation. That's what I acquired him for, is to be a guy that we can count on and really bolster that pitching staff. So 6-3. to three. Royals can't do anything in their top half of the inning. Let's go to the bottom half, and we got a base hit here. That's Luis Arias getting on base. A leadoff single, and I think it's just time. I think it's time. Two for two. Two home runs for a Rosarena. we got to go with the righty on righty. Lefty on righty matchup still not going to cut it for me. So Jacob Junis gets the ground ball that we absolutely needed. So a Rosarena is out along with Arias. That's a double play. There's your final stat line for Jordan Montgomery. Eight hits, four innings. Just not a good outing, man. Just not good. He just struggled. Just struggled today. He's been struggling all year. What's different, right? In the shift, Jorge Soler goes up the middle for a base knock. Jorge Lopez still out there, though, guys. And then, oh, baby. Get up. Get gone. Ryan O'Hearn, two-run shot. It's going to pull us within one run. It's now 6-5 to five in the top of the six with nobody down. 
We can do some more damage. We can come back. But is it possible? Can we do it? I believe in this Royals team. Do you guys believe in this Royals team? Come on. Come on. This is a premiere. Live chat it up. You guys believe in the Royals, right? Let's go. Polanco is going to make this play, though. Benintendi. Hard ground out there. Nick Vincent's going to strike out Hunter Dozier, so maybe that belief was not well-founded. Mabry's Floria is going to get the start today over Salvador Perez. Guys, he needed a break, and he's going to fly out, deep fly out to right field. All right, so we're done in the six. Let's go to the bottom of the six. We get a strike three called on Kirilov. Jacob Junis doing a job. Next batter up here is Mitch Garver. He's going to fly out into the right field corner. Hunter Dozier, as always, making my heart stop every time he goes out there and tries to field a baseball. All right, Alex Colome facing off against Javi Baez with a runner on base, and Baez sends a charge into this one. It's deep to center field, but at the warning track. Ugh, we just didn't get enough of it. Man, that would have put us on top, 7-6. to six. All right, Whit Merrifield coming up. He's still got that 19-game hitting streak, and this is not going to get the job done. Look at the PCI placement. Just, just, not a, just not a good swing by yours truly. Goldie, come on. What are you doing? Two down here in the bottom of the seventh. Jacob Junis is still out there. 37 pitches in three innings, and he's done a job, guys. He's done a heck of a job limiting this Twins offense to nothing. Nothing. It's still six to five. Top of the eighth. Soler going to ground out here to shortstop. That's going to be the first out of the inning for Tyler Duffy. Now here's a line drive deep to center field. Get up. Oh, man. What a play by Byron Buxton, the jump at the wall. Ryan O'Hearn almost had number two on the day. Ben Intendi, can you clutch up? Can you get it done? That's a deep fly ball to right. But a Rosarena backs up into the wall and makes the catch. This is unreal. We've hit three hard balls in the seventh and eighth, and we still can't get it done. Chris Bubich taking the mound here. Lefty on lefty matchup. Gets the strikeout. Jacob Junis' time was done. Now, we already know what Arroz Arena did against Montgomery, the lefty. What is he going to do here against the lefty? Bubic, he's going to ground out. Hard ground out, but Baez hangs with it, makes the play. We got two down here, two quick outs. Josh Donaldson, 2-2 two -two count. Ground ball back to Bubic, makes the play, and we're out of the eighth. Now, we've got one more inning. We've got three outs to get one run. Hunter Dozier is stepping to the plate, but we do call a pinch hitter, and it's Salvador Perez. So I mentioned that Valoria is getting the start here. Salvi needed some rest, but he's going to get a pinch hit call, and he delivers a base knock off of Stashak with nobody down. All right, so we got a leadoff single, and we're not going to screw this thing up like I did in one of the earlier episodes, guys. So we got a pinch runner that's going to be Michael Taylor taking over there for Salvi. And next batter up, we've got Mayrees Valoria, the guy who started for Salvi. Let's see what he can do. Oh, oh, count. Stashak delivers. It's a line drive deep into the gap. That's over the heads of Buxton and a Rosarena. Here comes Michael Taylor around third. The throw comes in, and it's not in time. The Royals will tie the game up in the top of the ninth with nobody down. Mayrees Valoria with a huge hit. That is going to be huge for his development as a hitter, as a young hitter for this organization. So I'm I, that made me feel real good, man. Tyler Naquin rounds out here to second, but that's going to move Valoria over to third. And we got, we got a good situation here. We need a fly ball. We need a sack fly, but this will get the job done too. Polanco is only play. Runner was going on contact up the middle. That was a good read by Valoria. That's going to... Have Kansas City take the lead. It's seven to six with two down. Hansel Robles has got to face Javi Baez. And he's gonna fly out here to shortstop center field area. That's a really good play. That's a really nice play, actually. But we get the job done, guys. We get the job done. So now it's up to Kyle Zimmer against Miguel Sano, who has had our number in this series, especially at Target Field. He's gonna strike out here. Kirilov comes up. And he's going to fly out to Tyler Naquin in center. All right. Next batter up is Mitch Garver. Been a thorn in our side. Already hit a two-run homer today. Round out to first. That's going to do it. The Royals get a come-from-behind victory. We were down 6-3 to three at one point, and we win 7-6. to six. Talk about a comeback, guys. Take a look at the box score. We got two runs in the sixth, two runs 
in the top of the ninth to win the game. Absolutely huge for this Royals team. We just we have so much fight. We got so much fight. We don't quit. I believe in this Royals team, man. I hope you guys do too. We're gonna have a heck of a playoff run here in the second half of the season. So, but we got to get past the trade deadline and the All Star game, right? So we got to get there first. But I'm getting real excited about this Royals team. Up on your screen, you see another trade. Tyler Glass now being acquired by the Blue Jays from the Rays. So an intra-divisional trade there. Kind of kind of weird. Kind of weird. Same thing here. The Mets acquire Sandy Alcantara from the Marlins. Just a weird trade. I, I love how the CPU tries to make these trades, and it always it tends to involve teams that are inside the same division. You just don't normally see that happen in Major League Baseball. So I just I love quote unquote love sarcastically it will be the show's trade logic love it right well take a look at this game here so you saw the box score from the last game but take a look at this score here we scored four runs in the top of the ninth to beat the twins five to four it's just it's like what's going on here in minnesota now we've scored three runs in the top of the ninth to beat them again five to four so really funny really really funny here if you're a twins fan you might be hating that but guys it's it's hilarious to me so we just keep beating them all right, so Matt Olson is going to be acquired by the Padres from the Athletics. So that's a huge trade for the Padres. So they're making a push as well. That's that's actually a really big trade to getting a left-handed power bat like that. Meanwhile, through simulation, as you guys see, we're just autoing the, the minor injuries. We're not really worried about the minor injuries. But we are on a huge winning streak here. Absolutely huge. So from Saturday, last Saturday, all the way up until Thursday against this Cleveland team, we continue on with our winning ways so we're really making a push here to be al central champs but again it's it's gonna be a long season the second half is always the toughest so we gotta possibly make some moves in the next episode to really make sure that that happens i really want to make sure that we make the playoffs here in year number two so up on your screen you see the al futures and we got bobby witt jr starting at shortstop here for the team you've also got eric pena making a bench appearance here as being voted on for the AL Futures team. So that's nice. We got two all-star representatives in their minor league system. Up on your screen, you see the Home Run Derby participants. And no, there's no Kansas City Royals. I, I really thought that Javi Baez was going to make make the cut there. He's got a lot of home runs, but just didn't get it done. Just did not get selected. Up on your screen here, Sean Santana, one of our year number one draft picks. So not a, not a custom prospect, but he made the DACN all-star team so did grant gavin a closing pitcher and i actually missed carlos hernandez as well so he's actually going to get the start he's the best overall rated pitcher right now he's got a 288 era he gets the call for the cn all-stars and we lose the game so he's registered with the loss i know i probably could have gone in gotten you guys a box score if i did quick manage but you know it's it's a c it's the cn all-star guy like i don't do you guys really care about that for immersion i don't know you let me know maybe i'll do it for year three but Josh Stalmont getting the call as a back-end bullpen guy for the AL All-Stars. So he's actually our only pitcher to make the All-Star team. Now as far as hitters go, Whit Merrifield hitting 304. He makes the cut as an All-Star second baseman as a backup. Javi Baez as a backup as well, hitting 22 homers, 62 ribbies. Gets the call as well to, be, to round out that lineup. And he's already matched his home run total from... 2021 so last year so year number one of the series with chicago 22 home runs for them 22 home runs for us and we're not even done with the season yet we're pretty much halfway through the year so he he could hit 44 if he doubles it up i'm thinking more along the lines of maybe 35 maybe 33 would be more conservative of a guess but either way man he should get to about 80 rbis 100 ribbies with 35 plus home runs i think he's been a steal contract wise performance wise what he's really been able to help with this team has been awesome taking a look at the tae all-stars we got edward Olivares on the bench and we got richard lovely as a closing pitcher in the back end as well so we've got a couple representatives there for kansas city now let's take a look at this offer real quick because st louis offers this to us it's tommy edmund who i love and alex avila for brady singer like hell no we're not going to do that we're first place in the Central, dudes. We're not going to be giving you guys our youngest, most highest potential pitcher. <laughs> We're not going to do that. Are you crazy? 
All right, so guys, in the next episode, we will get a minor league update across the league. We're going to do the Northwest Arkansas Naturals. We're going to see guys like Isaac Lopez, or Isaac Lopez, I should say, Brooks Ratto, our first-round draft pick from last season, Brady Erker's custom prospect, along with Lopez. And I'm even going to show you guys your own custom prospects as well, along with some trades. So guys, leave a like if you like this thing. As always, thank you for watching, and peace.